Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. It's been a couple of days, but we're back. We've had quite a bit on, and one of those things that we've been busy with, you're all gonna love. That's right, look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the newest addition to the family. This is Reggie. He's little Reggie. Yeah, he bites a lot. He bites a hell of a lot, don't you, Reginald? Anyway, he's a little border collie pup, nine weeks old. We got him for the kids and me. And he's an absolute little terror. He looks really sweet now, doesn't he? But I'm telling you what, he's eating just about everything going. So I'm gonna take him around to my mum's house this morning. She's doing well, by the way. And uh, hopefully this will cheer her up a little bit. And I want to see if I can't get her to babysit him for a couple of hours so I can go into work. I need to do a stock take and transfer that New England IPA to a keg. So there's a bit of a treat for you folks. And yes, Reg will be featuring a lot more in the videos to come. He's a diamond. But uh, I wasn't able to go to work yesterday because I had to look after him. Well, I did go to work, but he just sat in the office all day while I did boring paperwork, eh, Reggie? So anyway, let's get in the car, drive over town, and uh, drop this little troublemaker off. Oh, and if anyone's curious, Chance, he's not happy. We're still giving him lots of love and cuddles and attention, but he's just like a grumpy old man. Aren't you, old timer? <laughs> well, that's that. I'm not bothered. Right, come on then, Reg. Let's go. Well, we're in the brewery, and uh, yes, indeed, we've done a bit of a shuffle and a little bit of a stock take, so we know exactly what we've got and what we need to make over the coming week or two before the end of 2019. So we've got bitter in tanks ready to come out, vacant in tanks ready to come out, the plum porter ready to come out. We need to do a taste test on that, that'll have to be today. And the proof of concept ready to come out. And also, wrapped up nice and warm, well, cold actually, because it's crashing now, we have the New England IPA in here. And that is also ready to come out. We're just waiting for the temperature to drop a little bit more and then we'll be taking this out today. And the keen eyed of you may have spotted, I went and bought a hop spider so we don't have to worry about our woes when it comes to running beer through the plate heat exchanger. So there we go, I've bitten the bullet, never had one of these before, but this was the biggest one that I could find on the interwebs and I think Look at the size of it. It'll do, apparently it holds about two and a half to three kilograms of pellets, so that should be enough for us. And also in a future video, I want to make something similar for the boil kettle and the big fermenters to hold things such as coconut chips. So we can do the coconut shy without having to spend all day digging the old man's toenails out of the bottom of the fermenter. Anyway, I've walked into the brewery this morning, we've done a bit of shuffling, and I've got a package to open. So, I've just opened and read the letter, but I haven't opened the box. So, yeah, look at that. All the way from the land of Oz, indeed, sent by the Aussie brewer, Josh, and he's popped a little note in here. So let's just read this first. So, hi Chris, I hope this parcel reaches you well. It's a sample of my Marzen, Golden Ale, Sparkling Ale, and most importantly, my take on the Coconut Shy PA. I hope you enjoy these beers as much as I did, and if you could pass on one of each to Tom when you next see him, well, I'm sure I'll be going over in the next week or two, uh, I would greatly appreciate it from your long time subscriber from Australia, Josh, the Aussie Brewer. So thank you very much, Josh. Let's get into this. Now, I particularly like the way these were sent 
they're in a freaking cold bag. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. And also on the customs declaration, very, very smart move. He included a uh, data sheet from White Labs as they were packaged as a yeast culture. Therefore, if Her Majesty's Inspectorate decided to open said container, they were greeted with all of the relevant documentation. Here we go. I'll oh, check this out. Thanks for the bag, mate. I'm going to keep that. So we have, and it's the, the well labelled as well, which is a great thing. I like to see that. We have the Marzen, 4.1% ABV. Let's just come in a little bit with the camera. 4.1% ABV, 7.8 SRM, 20 IBUs. Here we have a sparkling ale, 5.5% ABV, 25 IBU and 4.3 SRM. Brewed on the 13th of July. Better get that drunk then, hadn't I? That was the 30th of March. Here we have another Marzen, that'll be Tom's. Here we have the Coconut Shy, 5.2, 36 IBU, 5.5 SRM, brewed on the 7th of September, so that's probably at its prime. And then we should have also, here we go, a Golden Ale, 5.2, 28 IBU, 7.2 SRM, brewed in June. There we go, well thanks a lot Josh. I'm hoping to get these uh, cracked open very soon. I do have quite a few beer reviews to get on the tubes. So I'm gonna have to kind of pull my finger out and do that pretty soon. So stay tuned for those. So before I put the New England IPA into keg, I've got to do a little bit of reconditioning for these little beauties. So I've been on the internet and I've ordered basically uh, quite a few spare o-rings and also some universal poppets if you can see that there they're just springs and poppets basically very very different to the ones that you normally get anyway there's lots of sellers on ebay so i just went for the one that i thought looked the most legitimate so that's up to you and also because this particular corner keg comes with a plastic gas in tube. I hate these things. So we're going to get rid of that. This poppet I've already had off and I've changed the little o-ring on the top there. That's very difficult to do. I didn't have I didn't order any spare o-rings for that, but I did fortunately have one spare off of a broken off of a broken poppet which is here. So I just harvested that o-ring. The old o-ring is here and if you look closely at this one you'll see that not only does it have an extra lip on it so it's not an O profile it's more of an L profile but also just on that side there it's got a little bit of a nick out of it which is why I swapped it for that one so these are the new dip tubes that come from eBay and they fit nicely onto these poppets, so to speak. So, obviously, pop it into the gas outpost or gas impost, and that follows it in, and it feels nice and it rotates nicely. And of course, we've got a O ring. Come on, focus, please. We've got an O ring just here, and then it's got like a lip almost looks like this little kind of washer has been pressed on afterwards either way I think it'll work for us and then of course I went to put it into the keg and oh no all of these kegs that have had a plastic gas in post have a little kind of shoulder on the inside of the uh, actual post itself so I've taken on one of them an 8mm drill bit and we've just oops and we've just eliminated it so to speak so 
Let me pop that gas post back on before we end up losing him. Not gas, sorry, liquid out. And then now the gas in post, now we've drilled it, should fit. He says, with trepidation. That will fit, I'm almost positive. There we go, beautiful. So that on there, and then the poppet and post. Get him on, and then they both need to be taken over now to the acid or the cask washer to give them a clean. But before I go any further, what I've also done is I've just taken the lids. Unfortunately, these lids, have I got the right one? This is uh, B. I don't have the right lid, this is E. But yeah, unfortunately, these lids aren't very good either, so I've got replacement gaskets for them too. So, we need to just go and charge them with a little bit of gas, see if the old pressure and if they do, then yes, we will be coming back in a moment to actually put some of that New England IPA in. So I'm going to wash this and then I'm going to have a little bit, little bit of a taste. A little bit of a taste, I'm getting excited. A bit of a taste of the uh, East Coast IPA, basically a New England IPA. And then if it's thumbs up, then it's in the keg we go. So we've got two corny kegs ready, ready, ready to receive the East Coast RPA and over here, you may think I'm mad, but we're going to try and run it through one of those Y strainers just to pick up the bigger particles. There is a bit of hot material in there, so this is either going to be an abortion or it's going to work. I'm not sure which, and the light's not great over here either, so you'll have to bear with me. But let's just get, uh, let's just get it flowing first, and just see how we go. We have beer in the line, but it seems to just be back feeding a little bit because of an airlock. So we'll get rid of that first. There we go. Don't want to see any airlocks in there, of course. And yes, there we go. We have beer flowing and there are no leaks. So I'm just going to go and get a spanner to make sure that the Y strain is tightened properly and then we're going to start filling these kegs. So far so good. So we've got the pipe on there. It is absolutely bubble free at the moment which is imperative. Then we're running it through the Y strainer which is only going to take out particles that are sort of uh, a millimetre and above which is fine and then we are running into here and you can see we have got a flow which means that it's doing its job so yes that's exactly what we're looking for so these kegs as well have been purged with CO2 so hopefully that CO2 stays in there obviously um, CO2 is heavier than air so, provided I don't make too much of a draft, that should be fine. But to be sure, double sure, I'm just going to pop the lids over the top of them both. Because one of the main contaminants for any beer is whatever's floating in the air. And we don't want that to settle into the kegs. So we'll just let that fill with gravity very slowly. Not forcing it through the filter, I don't want to block anything up. And of course, if it does block up, we do have a second emergency strainer 
so uh, we can use that but it turns out that these little beauties are coming in quite handy and the reason I'm filtering into the keg is because in the past when I've done big IPAs like this the hot particles block up the poppets on the liquid outposts so I don't want to run into that problem so we've got one keg full to the brim and the second one as you can see well that is there so I'm going to turn that off there might be a pint or two left in the fermenter but quite honestly I don't mind because I don't want to pull all that trube across anyway let's get this isolated we'll get the lid off and then we'll have a look inside the bucket and do some tasting so firstly let's have a look at the result of the fermentation here so this is obviously the fermenter disconnected and down now in the cleaning area and if I pull the lid off you can see that obviously there's been a few drips and what have you on the lid but none of that has made its way in because the cooling coils go in through this raised ridge area let's go and have a look at the coils well there we are they don't look bad at all little bit of yeast and hop stuck to them but that's fine pop them in the sink for cleaning and then here we have the tilt hydrometer the yellow tilt and as you can see he's picked up a little bit of trub on the top there probably throws the reading off a little bit but generally that's fine so we'll also pop him in the sink and then if I just bring the camera in and we'll get zoomed down in there you can see indeed all the trub and lovely stuff you really want me to put my hands in it don't you and see how many hops we've got in there let's go for it oh my god look at that that is all hop and yeast there's a heck of a lot in there right that is to be obviously cleaned out in a moment so let's go and have a look how much of this trub we actually caught in the Y strainer so in total I'd estimate that the transfer took around 20 minutes 10 minutes for each container which to be honest running it through this is not all that bad so let's uh, let's get zoomed right in here and just have a look exactly what we get I've not even had a look yet well that's not bad at all is it so I found that following the arrow on the side of the Y strainer means that the trub enters the center of the cylinder and then gets pushed out towards the other uh, exit if you like whereas if you go the other way and you go against the flow then the trub only really has one side of this filter casing to kind of interact with so it blocks up much more readily and as soon as that blocks up nothing can get round to the back so simply by following the correct direction on the wire strainer I seem to have escaped A oxidation B blockages and C pulling all of that into the uh, not the fermenter into the Cornelius keg where it would have definitely caused a problem with the poppets and finally what we have all been waiting for a sample so I've just got a few uh, LEDs here and a 9 volt battery so if I just connect them together <laughs> We've got like a little torch, but it's a strip of lights instead of just the one. So I can pop that little beauty on there. And yes, <laughs> that'll make a really good thumbnail, I think. 
but look at the colour of that. I think once it's carbonated, maybe settled out a touch more, it will look the part. I mean, it already kind of does. So, now you've seen what she looks like with the light behind her. Let's see what she smells like. Sneak peek, obviously it's still a bit green. God, it's not even two weeks old. So I'm definitely getting lime. I'm getting peach. I'm getting that, uh, that fruity, tropical, not dank. It's very fruity, citrusy and tropical. Almost like a, a peach. Uh, soft drink like Robinson's uh, I'm sure they do a peach one peach and apricot or something like that yeah that might be the other aroma that I'm getting apricot right let's have a taste mmm wow very fruity straight away almost i almost thought that there was going to be an attacking bitterness in there but it never really got above like just a kind of mellowing mellowing uh you know coating of the tongue with that bitterness all the fruits are still in there there's a little bit of a bite at the back of the palate mm when you dip your head in the glass to have a drink your senses are just overwhelmed with the fruitiness it's a winner I think it'll improve which is well I could drink it now as is it's as good as any beer I've had out of a can but let's get some vital statistics and analyze this and see where I think if I brewed this again which I will be doing we can improve on it so East Coast IPA started at 1066, finished at 1013. So the actual targets for this beer were higher, much higher. We wanted to start, I'm gonna to struggle to find it on here now, aren't I? Um, let's get over here. So yeah, we wanted to start at uh, 1068.5 or 10.685, which is a little bit higher, one, uh, two and a half points higher really than where we started, but we also finished lower. So even though we were shooting for an ABV in the region of 6.6%, we actually hit a 7% beer because we finished at 10.13. So that's one change that I'd make. I'd mash higher next time to try and hit that 10.17 final gravity. Uh, the Nottingham Ale yeast that we used probably over attenuated the beer a little bit, but it really has enhanced the fruitiness and a few people were worried whether that yeast was right for the style or not, but an English Ale yeast is what they recommended. Somebody said SO4. Yeah, you could use SO4. I kind of in the past have used SO4 and Nottingham kind of interchangeably, but I do prefer Nottingham Ale Yeast. I think it's much more of a reliable performer if there's a fluctuation in temperature, whereas SO4 doesn't seem to be able to cope with that. So I wouldn't change the yeast again. Maybe I'd use uh, a White Labs yeast. Who knows? But what I'm trying to do, as you guys know out there, is keep it simple here at the brewery. I don't want to be having too many strains in-house. If I can stick to USO5 for clean yeast and Nottingham for fruity, that's all we're going to need. So 28.5 uh, IBUs is where this is finished up. Now because we don't have the higher finishing gravity, I think the bitterness just comes through a tiny bit too much. Even though it's definitely not offensive. So maybe either drop the IBUs by maybe four, three or four to 25 IBUs, or really try and nail that final gravity. And then of course, 
we went ahead with four dry hop editions of Columbus, Equinox and Summit, each totaling one gram per litre. And that's what we've ended up with. Fantastic beer. The recipe is on my Beersmith profile, Harry Brew 69, along with the Plum Porter recipe. And uh, there'll definitely be more going up there, folks. So that's a sneak peek. I will come back when this beer is carbonated on tap and we'll have a final thoughts, as they say these days, at exactly how it's turned out. But I'm going to wrap it up for now, boys and girls. So thanks for tuning in. You know the drill. Like the video if you like the video. Hit that sub button if you're not already part of this fantastic community that we've got here on the channel. And while you're here, you can leave a comment and please have a look in the info section below. There's a link to the North Nottinghamshire Business Awards where Harrison's Brewery, The Brew Shed and our friends next door, Iron Tree Designs, are up for an award. So we could do with you logging on with your Google account and voting for us. And with that, I say thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.